Hi there, it's Tim here from Pure Search Marketing again. Now, I've got some questions that I need to be asking of Hubstars. I want to know, for example, what territories are the best ones to be going after. I want to know what keywords that I need to be using, if, if possible, if they've got a list. I need to know um, some other stuff around like negatives. Are there any negatives that I should be uh, looking at? Negative keywords, I mean. Um, and also, what are the critical success factors? So what should I be looking for in terms of success uh, for this for this um, for this campaign. So on the line now, I've got Andy Krogan, who's the head of sales and marketing for Hubstars, and hopefully he's got all the answers for me. So here we are. I've got Andy here, Andy Krogan, who's the head of sales and marketing from Hubstars. Now today, thanks very much for being with us, Andy. But I think first of all, we've got to tackle that hairstyle, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> what on earth well, is that all about? <laughs> Well, firstly, thanks, Tim, for inviting me along and, and involved me in this process with you. Uh, basically, what we've done, obviously, during the, the COVID crisis that's happening at the moment, um, our companies had staff members and myself and friends and family that have been affected by it. Um, and obviously, the NHS has been a great support and help for them all. Uh, so we just kind of, I originally had the idea because my hair, as you all know, was growing increasingly <laughs> too funny as the more it went the more it went so instead of me just having the shave in my head I was like I know what I'll do is I'll see if I can raise some money for the NHS uh, I told Michael the the business owner Hubstar's owner and he was like of course I'll do that as well and then it grew legs and legs and legs and then we did this morning we did the we did the, the cut so this is the fresh the fresh look um, Fantastic. that's come into play yeah so uh, secretly I'm going to keep it so that's it <laughs> So how long do you, uh, do you, I was going to ask, are you, are you, is that now the new Andy that we're going to see for the next 10 years? Well, the best thing about it is, is that the, the wife now can't look at me. So yes, it will be kept for ages. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I think it looks really good. And you were saying before the call that you're thinking of, you're going to dye it pink? Yeah, well, I think, yeah, I'm going to dye a, a, a colour that I can get. I was trying to order hair dyes and stuff like that um, for the cut. Um, but there's, it's not considered an essential item. I don't know why. I don't mean why. It's essential to me. <laughs> Excellent. So, so can you take us through the, uh, the Hubstar's million dollar project? Um, and so basically what it's about and what you're trying to achieve with it. Yeah, well, really what it is, is it's we've been something we've been planning for a long time. And we have a platform and our platform itself prides itself on being able to connect people with with special interests and, and specific interests and um, what we call niching and um it's a way of getting people that love music connected together that love gaming connected together and things like that and and making sure that people can find the right places and because we've now got a system that does that we looked at this and we're like we get lots of inquiries from lots of people about new dating product ideas and um, new companies, new dating companies that they want to set up and run and ideas. Um, and what we wanted to do was encourage that and some more and give people the opportunity to kind of test run their, their whole new dating brand concept on an existing platform and an existing setup. Um, so rather than spending all of the development time and building an app and building a website and doing all of that kind of stuff themselves um, and learning all of the pitfalls that, as you'll know, are rife when doing that, mm -hmm. um, you can spend a lot, an incredible amount of time on development of, of your actual product and the branding of everything and then launch it and it'd be a complete that squib. <laughs> so rather than having people invest all of their time and effort on that side of things, we can provide a fully functioning, high performance dating product and algorithm service mm. that connects people for, for, for these special interests. So we want people to join in if they've got any ideas of a market that they want to reach or, or, or things like that, then this is, this product's for them. Um, and what we're doing with this project is making sure that people only, only need to focus on the marketing. So they only need to focus on the outward things and what they're going to do to attract users to their brand. Um, and what we're also providing with that is significant help, hence the million dollar <laughs> tagline with it, um, where we'll be providing the investment funds um, to get them off the ground and up and running um, for that. I mean, I think you'll know, Tim, um, that the dating space is, some would say it's crowded, but it's definitely not overcrowded. People's needs 
um, as as the online dating industry grows and grows and grows and more people um, you see it as normality and this is how you meet people the more and more demand there is for specific interest sites so I mean the big ones obviously are always good for that but when you when you find the right site and you can find people the right people that they want to meet um, it kind of makes the whole dating process easier yeah. because if you can I, I'm I love my movies I am a, a, a film fanatic so if I wanted to meet somebody that was a film fanatic, we could use this for that. And then I know straight away when I meet that person that at least we've got one thing in common. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. But maybe not yeah. the hair. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, okay, that's brilliant. Thanks, thanks very much for that. So I'm, I'm getting involved in this and I'm going to be um, going after the niche, the gamers niche. And mm-hmm. this is primarily in the US, is it? So the project is primarily in the US. Yes. Right? So it, yeah, it's it's mainly in the US, but we are yeah. offering in the UK as well. Right. Um, okay. The two markets mirror each other quite quite well, yeah. um, especially in terms of marketing. Um, for that, there's there's generally the same level of interest uh, and things like that in the market space. But in America, of course, the opportunities are much bigger right. because of the sheer population scale of the country. Right. So it makes more sense to launch in America. Okay. Okay. So, and with my, um, with my niche, so I'm going after the gaming niche. I've already got my, um, URL. So I've already bought that. It's called gamerdatingarena.com and I'm going to be primarily promoting it with uh, Google ads to start with, uh, hence these, these videos. And so I've, I've got a few questions on that, if that's all right, just to ask you, so your cool. advice on those, cause you've already got some of these niches live. So yeah. if I'm going in the U S my, my approach would be, generally would be to go state by state. Um, so if I'm going state by state, what from your point of view would be the first five states for me to start with? Yeah, well, um, I just want to say quickly, I think what you've touched on at the start of that question was is exactly the right approach. So taking it on a state level, first of all, and I think it's important for anybody starting their process as a digital marketer and running AdWords for the first time, it's a good logic point to base on and think, right, the US is, however, 400 million people, whatever the number is, um, are people spread out over a vast land space. Now, yeah. what we want to do is connect people with a shared interest that can date and meet people. So if you're targeting the whole of the US as one big go, then if someone signs up in California and you've only signed somebody else up in New York, how are they ever going to really communicate with each other? So approaching yeah. it state by state is exactly the right way to go. Okay. Um, the, the best five states, again, is, is based upon purely on the, the, the pool of the, the population. Yeah. So it would be New York, New Jersey, Florida, uh, Texas, and California. Okay. So if I get these five going first and then they, they are getting them to work, then we can add the next five and the next five and just grow, grow things that way. Exactly. Exactly okay. that. Okay, great. Um, and okay, keywords. So I could, I can, I will be doing my own research into obviously into the keywords. But uh, if in terms of the uh, gamer dating arena, have you got sort of like a starter for 10, like a list of keywords that, that I could use or start well, with? My, my normal advice at the start of any uh, process is to go really simplistic with the keywords. Um, as you'll know, Tim, that the, the more simplistic and broad your keywords at the start of a project brings you in more search terms, which teaches you more data about your audience. Yes. So literally what I would be doing is, is I would encourage gamer dating for one to add into that. Um, any other iteration. So um, um, find gamers to date um, and, and different iterations of that. So find gamers and um, find gamer dating, gamer dating itself. Yeah. Um, and, and start to build up that way. I mean, the other um, strong keywords kind of to, to focus on are specific for that niche. Mm. Um, so um, things like you have with your brand. So the game of dating arena. Yeah. Right? The arena part of that really, really appeals to that marketplace. Um, so it, it, it's looking at keywords in that manner. But first of all is I would use four or five keywords like find gamers that, to date gamer dating um partners interested in gaming a, a really good standard basics of keywords and the structure of those kind of basics is different typing patterns for the same result yeah. so users typing in find gamers online um to date or gamer dating yeah those users have different search typing patterns but they're looking yeah. for the same thing yeah um, so that's what you want to do and i would encourage 
a broad approach on those basic few keywords to start off with yeah. um, and then use that as a reference point to get more search terms that you actually see from users yeah. and then add those in and, and identify the trends from those search terms from your audience. Yeah. Um, the other really good starting point would be looking at your com competition in the market space. Yeah. So look who else is targeting those keywords. Yeah. And it's, it is uh, uh, a common practice to target competitive comp competing brands. Very good. Thank you. Um, the second thing is, as we know, it's, making sure that we've got a good negative keyword list in place is yeah. um is critical to start with is there a is there like a basic list that you have that you can provide us with that um that we can just plug in and then obviously add to as 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 we're starting to optimize things but is do you have like a starter negative keyword list yes so um as a as a business um we obviously do our own acquisitions um of users and, and traffic buying which has allowed us to generate a really strong robust negative keyword list that we recommend all users use it's quite yeah. a long one <laughs> um but it, it just means that immediately you're not going to make the the initial mistakes that are commonplace right brilliant okay that's really good and um on to my next question really is around target CPA. So I'm not gonna to be touching manual CPC. Um, I'm gonna be starting out straight away with the target CPA and wanted to know your advice on what's the best um, target CPA to begin with. And we're talking about registration here. I'm not talking about subscription. So I wanna to, want to set a target CPA for my registrations. Okay, well, it's difficult for me to give you a straight up answer to that question because there's two real approaches that I would recommend dependent on people's circumstances mm -hmm. um, and dependent on people's budget availability um, to do this. Um, now, if, if you are just a normal person with not a, a, a war chest of cash, um, I would recommend absolutely starting with your, your target CPA of about two pounds, two pounds 50, right. something in that region, because that is where we would be hoping campaigns get to at some point down the line mm -hmm. so if you are short um and you don't want to overextend yourself early on there's no harm in in limiting that right down you won't see huge scale at that point and you it will take you longer to gather data but mm. of course it means that long running your cash flow and everything else will stay consistent right so However, and, that, and that's pounds but are we talk so in terms of dollars are we saying so like two two dollars or two two dollars fifty uh, yes, yeah, basically. So it, it, it's around about in that in that kind of region. Um, okay. Again, it's again a reactive thing. So you need to set it up and see what you get, and then adjust accordingly. But the other route and the one I would say helps the process along immediately quicker, helps you optimize your campaigns quicker, gives you scale quicker, and gets you to the point where you're making a good margin quicker, is to put a high CPA in to start off with. Okay. So I'm often double what I've just said. So you're talking four or five wow. double pounds. Okay. Um, now, what happens then, as I'm sure that you, you, <laughs> you've already discussed, is the, the, the learning mode situation. Yeah. So when you, when you launch that new campaign with a high CPA like that, then you're putting Google into the learning mode, and it's like, right, okay, this, this campaign really wants to get the data in. So then you'll get more higher clicks. You'll, anybody that you're competing with on a bidding front, um, should, you should be able to get above them um, for that. And then during that learning phase, you're getting good volumes of traffic in, which means you're getting good volumes of search terms, um, which means you can more quickly build out your keyword list. You're also getting good volumes of negative things to block out as well that are specific to your campaign. And of course, you're getting all the metrics for your landing page design, um, in your advertising as well to see where you can improve straight away. And obviously right. the bigger the data set, the more accurate the results. Right. Um, so that's what I would recommend with CPA. It's one of two approaches. Either way is a can be a successful approach. Um, but I would recommend going in with a high C CPA to start off with if you can. Right. Brilliant. Okay. And as we're going along, um, I'm going to be looking for success indicators. So obviously, um, there's a few there that I'm going to look at, but what, what would, in your view, would be the main um, success indicators, the main things to be looking at to make sure that I'm on the right track with my advertising? Okay, well then, that's where our portal um, comes into play. Uh, we provide you with all the key metrics that you need to be able to make these decisions. And the ones to focus on 
if you think about it from the user side of you until the cash side of you <laughs> along that journey. So the first stage of that is your click-through rate. Mm -hmm. um, so how many people have been shown your advert? How many of those people click on your advert and hit your landing page? Yeah. Now, for that, what you want to be hitting is a kind of minimum, really, of like 4 to 5% of your traffic is clicking through. Yeah. Um, and I know some people think uh, a higher uh, area of that is, is really good. Um, but when you think about what you're targeting, you're targeting a very specific user. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't really want an advert that gets 30 40% click-through rates, especially at the start of this process, because the vast majority of those users are not really going to be interested in what you've actually got to sell. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll be looking for but between 4 and 5% as a good starting point for your click-through rate. Right. The next stage then is your um, conversion rate of, the, of the, your landing page. Mm -hmm. um, now, this is where the metrics start to rise. So what you wanted to see as a minimum really is 20%. Yeah. The one in five users that hit your landing page sign up as a registration. Great. That's a good metric that kind of feeds back into um, that your advertising is good. It's primed the user well for the experience they're going to get when they hit the landing page. Mm -hmm. And your targeting setup is correct because you've, got, you've shown the user the correct advert, they've hit the landing page, and they've converted into a registration. Right. Um, that, that's the, the key area there. Then once they've signed up and they're, they're now a registration and a member of your brand, mm -hmm. you then want to look at your email verified rates. Now, this is a, a key one um, because email verified rates tell you if you are appealing to the wrong audience very, very, very quickly. So if people aren't engaged with your branding, they don't trust the landing page, they don't trust the site, they don't trust the advertising, they still yeah. might register, but they don't trust it. They're not going to verify their contact information, yeah. um, which, is, which is what we count as email verified, is when a user right. receives an email from us at the point of sign up to say, you've signed up here, please confirm that this is you. Yeah. Um, and what you'd want there is a minimum of 75%. Um, is, is what you'd be kind of looking at to achieve straight out the gate. And obviously, over time, again, as with all these metrics, you'd want the, to improve them over time. The 75% yeah. is a good indicator that you're on the right track. Okay. Um, the next metric along the line is your completed profile. Now, this is where we start to get into the real detail of how well the, your users are performing um, and, and, and the actions they're taking in, the, in their account. So a completed profile is when somebody's filled out all their details, their interests, their likes, their dislikes, put a little bit of a biography <clears throat> on them and uploaded a picture. Yeah. Um, and of course, that uploading a picture and filling out all that details really tells you a lot about your user base and how engaged they are um, with the product and the, and, and the branding that you've, you've offered them. Yeah. Um, now for that, you'd be wanting to hit about 65%. Right. And... Um, Obviously, you'd want to kind of grow that if you can. Um, but 65% is a good, stable metric to be going on of people that have completed their profiles. Yeah, yeah. Is that, is that within a particular time frame or, or you know, say yes. that sort of over a seven-day period or, or a longer? I would, I would always measure it in two ways. So I would keep a track of it on a weekly basis. Yeah. I try to avoid the daily basis because you can get reactive um and and react to market natural market fluctuations which are which will damage everything so i'll do it on a weekly basis um and then on a month i'll do a full overview and what you will find is that your email pro, uh, um, uh, verified rates and your um, profile completion rates will rise over a month period of time right so as the users come in they might be cautious to upload any information about themselves they just want to browse what's available there and then their commitment then hopefully kicks in at that point it's like yes the product is what they're looking for um, and then they'll update it so you should see a, a small incremental rise in all those metrics after you've brought that traffic in right. um, and then the important metric um to consider as well the final one is your upgrade percentage yeah so how many of your users that you've you've acquired have then decided and gone on to pay um for their subscription yeah and uh, for that metric you really, within the 30-day period of, of you buying that traffic, you'd want that to be between 4 and 5%, um, ideally. Um, and then, obviously, after 60 days and after 90 days, those users that you acquired in that first month, you'll see that upgrade percentage rise as well um, yeah. as the user's activity gets more and more and more um, within the base. Brilliant. Right. 
<laughs> lot to take on. I think I'm going to get busy. Um, <laughs> take, okay, so that that's really good. That's given me a really good indication of everything that I need to be tracking as I as I be, as I go through this process. Is there is there a sort of a return on investment that I should be looking for at this stage? The thing to think about with your when you're looking at your return on your investment is is one, don't panic in the early stages. Remember, this is like we've discussed already, this is the data gathering point. This is giving yeah. you everything that you need to be able to make good margins and good profit. What I would say is a very good indicator is between 35 to 40% return um, in the first month on your marketing spend means that you're, you're in a really good place. Um, right. okay. And you can, you can then push on beyond that point. Um, so, I mean, a little insight, the average user, um, subscription lasts for about three and a half months right and um, that's the uh, on average what people do so if you think that if your cost per sale is um about you know uh, a third of your acquisition cost to get that um out of the returns then you then you'll be in a good spot and then right. you know you'll be making a good margin of course again with that it's important to keep track of that because that will rise given time yeah. So you have the late bloomers and the users that sign up but then upgrade, but then three months down the line they actually do. Yeah. Um, and you need to make sure that you're tracking your campaigns well enough and the returns to make sure that you're associating any revenue increases with the right bank of users that you've acquired. Okay, that's that's fantastic. That's a load of great information for me. Is there anything before I sign off and start you know, allowing you to get on with the rest of your day and for me to start building these campaigns out. Is there anything else that I need to be bearing in mind, Andy? The strongest bit of advice is, if you're embarking on this project, commit to it. And understand that it's not, uh, don't think of it like a cash machine. Mm. Think of it like this is your brand, this is your product, this is, you want users to engage with your brand, you want the data to be able to expand your reach and your audience as much as possible. Um, and and to give it time and, and 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 wait and for the data to come in and act upon that data just as my overall advice is is that if you are expecting the world immediately then you're always going to struggle to maintain the effort that's required to do this so it's just stick with the course make sure that you consult with people like yourself or with us um, and and the team here um, with hubstars and whenever you're concerned about anything we'll always be here to help in any way we can um, but yeah, so basically just don't be too reactive. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'll bear that in mind. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Lovely. Andy, thanks ever so much. And I love the hairstyle. Thanks, <laughs> thanks very much for taking this time out to, to give me this advice on no how to build this site with you. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the next, it's going to be the next sort of 30, 30 to 60 days for me building this out. So I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, it's going to be good fun. Much. Yeah, it That's is. Great. See you later, mate. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Bye-bye now.